looking it's looking smooth to everybody. I think we can uh just start and just go. Let's just start and just go. Okay, let's start and let's go. All right. Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for coming through to watch this wonderful exclusive interview with uh, via multiple video feeds, the one and only Brock Hampton. Thank you guys. Thank you for coming through. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you. Hey, we hey. Really did. This is this is the most video feeds I've done during a live. So you guys are once again making history. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, whatever. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you. No, thank thanks, bro. No, thank thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Um, new new record is out. New album's out. Uh, what are we feeling in terms of like the reception so far? Are we happy with how uh, fans are taking it? Um, you know, are you getting the response that you were hoping for with uh, uh, this LP, considering some of the mixed points of view on the last couple? Hmm. I've heard a lot of good things, personally. Yeah, I haven't, haven't, haven't been reading into it too much. Yeah, it might be too early. Too early. Yeah, I'm, I'm just excited that it's out in the world, honestly. Um, you know, how long and how intense was the recording process of this project, considering, I mean, the pandemic that's been, you know, ongoing over the past year? I mean, the fact that... Um, that's a, a sort of been a factor. Uh, did that cause you guys to have to reevaluate your approach to putting these projects together, writing, collaborating at all? Very long and very intense because we worked on the project. We started the project probably like the day after we finished Ginger. We just started on this one. I think uh, Bow Wow from the physical version of the CD that was probably uh, from what well, Ginger came out like August, and then uh, we made that song in September. So it's been a it's been a long process. And you know, as as I was sort of uh, asking earlier, you know, in in regards to that process when um, the pandemic came through and the lockdown started, did that kind of like interrupt things and you know slow things down or change things any, or did you guys just kind of power through that and just kind of go through it as if I don't know. It, it just wasn't a thing. Definitely slowed things down. I think for the first four months, I didn't really see anybody and I didn't really make anything. And then we started doing the technical difficulty stuff and it kind of brought me back in that workflow. And, and but that was a whole different thing. That was that was we had an album finished at that time, but that was that was not the one you heard recently. It's, it's a whole nother one. So it was a lot of back and forth and a lot of just refiguring out things but i think i think it brought us a lot closer because we had time to reflect and time to live our lives and came back and i was excited to see everybody excited to work hungry yeah i mean <clears throat> at this point and, and this is a question really I'd, I'd like to hear maybe from each of you on um you know, considering the hardships that the group has gone through over the past several years and throwing the pandemic on top of it, uh, what do you feel like is really keeping all of you together at this point? <clears throat> For me, I'd say we've always been like a family and, and that's normal, but uh, I think we just trust each other. We bounce off each other we're inspired by each other we love each other and i think our bond is more vast than just work it's 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 down to person to person and everybody's love for each other yeah sometimes i just <clears throat> ask myself the same question and i i just kind of dead it because it's you know it's, it's why not like, why why wouldn't we I mean, I, I guess there's clearly an incentive to keep it together, but can, a, you know, over the course of time, can it be difficult to sort of maintain peace in this cohort where you have so many different perspectives and points of view and, uh, you know, uh, egos at this point? Yeah, sometimes. It, I mean, yeah, of course, like every, every band gets into their, like, 
gets into their arguments and shit. But uh, we recognize that, like at the end of the day, the the thing we give most precedence and most importance is is the music. So if somebody well, says somebody- something, says something to me that like I don't appreciate or like whatever, I I recognize that at the end of the day, it's like about the song, like we just want to make the best music possible and then this is a group of people who i have most fun doing that with so why i don't know why would i stop for now no that makes no sense bro i feel like um also too like in consideration to like it just being like you know us being abandoned like it having it like these family components to it you know brothers quarrel like that's like a very it's a very normal thing to happen you know it would be, it would be weird and uncomfortable if we couldn't argue or we couldn't have disagreements and things of that nature so i think that's just part of being human you know i mean uh, i i agree with what don is saying i mean you know considering how large the group is those disagreements and you know those moments where you don't see eye to eye um are going to be a natural occurrence but over the years that you guys have been together do you feel like you've I don't know, gotten better at managing that or come up with, uh, I don't know, either formally or informally, some kind of process with just like filtering through those issues better? Um, I think everybody has become significantly better people, like just in regards to how they like the the way that conflict resolution, like internally gets solved. um, I'm, I'm just really happy to be able to grow with these people. For real, for real. That's like all I can really say about that. Mm. Yeah, and to that point, I feel like we've grown better at just uh, claiming who we are as individuals and bringing that to the group more and accepting each other for who we are while keeping a mind, you know, open mind about, uh, I don't know, whatever anyone wants to say on the mic, you know, and if someone cares to talk about it, no one's afraid to ask questions. So it's just kind of this ever-evolving net of just... uh, understanding really in a world of complexities that are far beyond all of us and considering that um the importance of being able to work together as a group and sort of see yourselves as a group um is is it also important or is it also something that crosses your minds individually to you know be able to function in brockhampton but also maintain your individual voice as well I mean, I feel like the individual. Like the individual. Voice, oh, whoa! Sorry, I just That's got a little cool. feedback. Calm out. Yeah, just like the individual voice is. Um, I don't know. We always all have a lot to say, just as as people. And um, no, there's there's no stopping it. You know. Whether, whether it's in my time, Matt's time, Dom's time, like for now we're all together and like it's one voice. But even still, I, I don't think it is, you know? I mean, speaking for myself, it's just another outlet. And like what I do beyond it is what I'll do beyond it, but I'm not in particularly any rush to <clears throat> make it known that like, oh, this is all the other shit I could say at this moment in time. You know, I just feel like it's beyond it. Uh, Ian, listen, is, is Brockhampton really breaking up soon? Like after the next record? Is that really, is that really the case? Not breaking up, but like, I feel like, um, after this next album, it would just be amazing if we could all, you know, go off and do whatever it is that we actually want to do outside of the group. Cause you know, for years we just put so much into this one thing. And I feel like, um, at a certain point it starts to become like, restricting and put some of the artists in the box really so it, it's it's not so much a breakup as much of like a refocus or just sort of like uh allowing people to just sort of like put their efforts and put their energy outside of the group in a way and then maybe reconvene at some point yeah and also just giving like brockhampton the opportunity to evolve and transform into whatever it's supposed to be after you know we've made like all of our favorite albums or whatever, just like, you know, do, do, do something else, do something new. That's kind of how I see it really. Um, going back to, uh, some of the group dynamic stuff is, as far as the 
creative process goes um, with writing and like really finalizing tracks. Uh, all in all, how democratic would you say that process typically is? I mean, if one member, two member, three members, you know, have some kind of like outstanding issue with how a certain verse goes or a certain song goes or how a certain beat sounds like, is that interruptive to the process? Is there some way of just circumventing that? Is, you know, d does it get worked on until everybody's like finally happy with it, essentially, when you're talking about like every song individually? I mean, I, I would... I would dare say that it's entirely democratic through and through. Yeah. Like everyone's voice and opinion is um, considered and the mic is on, the mic is on. Like you could say whatever you want, sing whatever you want, <clears throat> you know, but as far as I guess like it, it narrowing down to the album that people hear, um, everyone has a say in that, but I said it to you somewhere recently, my fault. No, go, go, go. I was just saying, like, there's this weird thing that we've developed through the years where it's, you know, you're, we're, none of us are particularly married to any idea that we have. And that kind of answers, like, falls back on the previous question about, like, individuality in this group is everyone is doing it for themselves, ultimately. You know? Even if no one ever hears it. Like, Dom's touched on that a lot. Like, if it weren't for Brockhampton, he'd still be in his basement doing the damn thing I think that yeah I think that shit's important man like it's like a, it's a form of self-preservation at that point you know like just um like being able to ultimately like create for a purpose that like can serve yourself but also being able to know the role that you have to play to like serve a per like a bigger purpose you know there's like it's, a, it's important to like know and be able to balance all of that stuff Talking about the um, <clears throat> sort of the sound and some of the changes that you guys have made to the new LP, one of the most not uh, notable things uh, that many have brought up is uh, just the fact that you guys are bringing on some bigger name features with this record. Um, you know, Danny Brown, JPEG Mafia, uh, Sean Mendez is in the mix as well on a track, uh, ASAP Rocky and Ferg, so on and so forth. Uh, what caused you guys to go into a direction where you kind of broke that seal? You know, um, and obviously you've had features on records in the past, but, um, you know, uh, n not, nothing sort of like on the, on the size of Danny and then having him in the music video too, you know, it was really just kind of a, a crossover that a lot of fans were excited for. We just, we just wanted to invite people to, you know, sit at our lunch table, have a meal with us. That's basically mm -hmm. it. You know, like I love Danny Brown. I listen to, uh, when I first got uh, my driver's license, I would drive around and listen to the Triple X album all the time. So just like uh, working with people you appreciate and you're super fans of, um, and just like being fortunate enough and being in a position to be able to do that, why not take advantage of that, you know? And just like giving people the chance to hear like some of these bigger artists on like a very specific sound, like the Brockhampton sound. I feel like that was just like a really fresh thing for us to try out. It, it was different for us and it was, it was fun to do overall yeah plus we always want to do something new like um at a certain point it gets uh just stale doing the same type of record over and over again so we wanted to challenge ourselves and do something different and what what would you say in your opinion is that brockhampton sound at this point because you know considering all the evolution that you guys have undergone over uh the years right now you know going from those raw more aggressive uh vibes of the saturation series to how mellow and somber ginger was and now to what you know road, road, road runner has become um at the core of everything we do I always feel like it's super emotional even if it's fun and daring or whatever there's it, it, always like some sort of you know there's something gut wrenching about it in a way that I mean, that's what I'm always aiming for whenever we're in the studio. Also, I feel like people forgot that there were like songs like uh, like Swim and like Trip and all these songs on the early Saturation yeah. series. Not not specifically, but people talk about Saturation as if it was just like 40 yeah. bangers. 
but there were like fucking there were some really sad depressing songs on there too i just think um as we grew up it wasn't um like uh it's easier to make those type of like up tempo like in your face daring songs when it's like that's literally what life is like and you're living with 14 people in south central as we grow up and get older and live separate lives it um the uh the common thread starts to become different and that that just finds its way into the music but but i think we've always uh the part of the brockhampton sound is just like the variety and like the the collage because there's so many of us who bring like a different flavor and taste to the sound that um I, th I think the beauty of it is how we're able to make it make sense as if it's coming through like one filter even though it's five six seven eight nine ten people contributing to one song that's what's beautiful about putting the track list together too because like you know um uh everyone has a chance to fight for a song that they really believe in that they feel like really represents the album. And I might totally like not agree with it at all. And then just that discussion kind of adds to just finishing the album really, like it becomes a part of the work itself. Was there a lot on the cutting room floor with this record? A lot of songs that didn't make it? Yeah, I mean, we spent like two years on it. So we made like three albums. I feel like Bari could speak to this because he always talks about that. Yeah, there's like, <clears throat> excuse me, there's like a, a lot of songs that we've done like throughout the, the span of the two years, worked on multiple albums. And I don't know, I just feel like <laughs> me and Joe was joking about this, like there's a couple of songs we're like, oh, this going in the Brockhampton vault, like this is a vault classic. Because <laughs> like, there's so much, there's so much songs that we think that are amazing that the pe that people never get to hear. You know, so it's a regular thing with each album. And yeah, it can be like so many reasons why people might not hear something because it might be like you'll get a song, but the song that you'll get might just have like a different version or different verses and things of that nature. We might pull a verse from another song that like is going into a vault to be like, wait, that doesn't need to be in a vault. We should bring that back into whatever this album world is. And like, you know, you like that. That can happen a lot, you know, so it's just it's it's everything is like so many interchanging parts you know at any point in time even that vault that bar you're speaking about it's like anyone can pull a verse from there and just you know switch it up yeah but even if you don't it's a source of inspiration mm. you know true like the the hive mind is aiming higher mm. and, and that kind of it goes back to again like just not being married to any idea too much because if, if you speak your piece on a, in a on a track that's in the vault like you you still live with what you said and you learn from it, you know? And sometimes I feel like people not hearing it helps you kind of have time to process what it was you were even saying and then come in a more condensed way that's going to hit harder and sure. ultimately inspire other people in the group. Speaking on that directly, I mean, one of the most ear grabbing things from the new record uh, for a lot of fans were, you know, your verses on, uh, uh, the light part one and two, um, you know, it's, yeah. it's obviously a, a tough subject and it's even tougher, I think, to even ask a pointed question about it, but, you know, just to be general about it, um, you know, take us through that process of deciding to, you know, share that experience of yours and the way that you did, you know, on this group album, such a, you know, such a pointed and personal thing, um, uh, you know, in, in, in the way that you did, you know, just, just the process of putting that together and, uh, you know, delivering and writing it in the way that you did. I appreciate the pointed question. just want to like yeah. say that because I know it's awkward to bring up, but I put it out there so people could ask questions, whether it be to like people that they love, that they see, you know, struggle in, or like even just the internal dialogue that they have with themselves like ultimately, to put it very simply, <clears throat> I wanted to turn something negative um, into something positive and hopefully help people I'll never meet or never have the chance to talk to. But um, at the end of the day, by doing it, it's kind of a way for me to come to terms with the fact that like I care a lot about people to the point in which I'll never be able to 
speak to them. Like just, just point blank period. Like I just, I want to help. I want to heal. Uh, certain things you just have to say. And I feel like at the same time, like you don't necessarily know why you love people. You know, you just have that feeling and it's, it's a, it's a, <clears throat> it's a torch, man. I, I don't know. But like I, my whole life kind of led up to those verses for obvious reasons. And it's very hard to, to condense it down. But, um, you know, since the album came out, I, I haven't listened to those tracks. But before the album came out, I listened to them on repeat you know, and um, eventually I just stopped crying to him. And uh, that's kind of like my process of coming to terms with my reality is we can all lie to ourselves and we can lie to people that we love. But like, if you're lying to yourself, that's the ultimate disservice. So yeah, since it's come out, <clears throat> I haven't listened to it, man, because it's not mine anymore. But there's something beautiful in that. It's definitely a version of letting go. It's just a desperate attempt to let go. So far, it's done something. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people seem genuinely moved by it. And to, you know, hear you kind of put it in those in those terms and, uh, you know, just as uh, what it represents for you. Um even though everybody on the record in the more emotional moments of the LP aren't coming at their verses with the same exact points of view or experiences, uh, you know, I'll say from my perspective, and I'd like to know if you guys feel the same way. Uh, do you think there's also just kind of a general sentiment of uh, feeling like you're going through something and being aware of other people going through something and wanting to reach out to them you know, through this music and, you know, just sort of like, uh, I don't know, doing some kind of like public service, uh, you know, through art in that way. It kind of seems like there's, there's an effort to do that at least, uh, uh, subtly on some tracks. Well, just speaking of personally, I always want, uh, if we put something out, I want it to move people some way, what positive or negative, just because, uh, there's so much music always coming out. I want to make sure that if we're putting something out, it like actually matters and is uh, significant and um, it means something. And it's not just like uh, all stylistic. Like I, I think having some sort of substance is important because that's what will bring you longevity and that's what gives you connection with people. And that's what, uh, that's, that's the music that just as fans sticks with you the most. Like there's, uh, there's some artists that like, I may not have kept up uh, with their career over the years, but the, but the stuff that stuck with me that they released, whatever it was, I still connect to that regardless. You know what I mean? So just about, yeah, in, in, a, in a way it is a kind of a public service, but it's also, it's also kind of selfish. Um, it's, it's just one of those weird things. Yeah. I feel like you can't really claim whether it's like for public service, mm. you know, and like, I, I hate to even call it selfish. It's like the, the only reason we put those two terms on it is because people are listening, you know, which is the beauty of it and arguably the point. But at the same time, it kind of has nothing to do with any of us. It's just our interpretation of the world, how we process things and like how we can make it uh, digestible, I suppose. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about um, the promotional end really quickly, specifically some of the visuals that you guys have been putting out. Um, generally, what has kind of driven you guys to uh, go for these new you know, music video aesthetics that uh, you're going for, which are quite psychedelic, and some of the CGI figures that, uh, I don't know if this is intentional or not, but um, I don't know, they're, they're kind of nightmarish. Uh, <laughs> The, the figures that you guys have kind of put in the music videos, like the, the, they're subtly unsettling versions of yourselves, obviously. I mean, uh, did you mean for them to come across so odd? I think going back to what Romeo was talking about, like just making art that sticks with people and moves you. 
And I feel like it doesn't always have to be like, you know, what you're saying or how honest or, or real you're being in the music. It could be like an aesthetic thing or a mood or, or energy or vibe thing as well. So with the video, we wanted to do something that felt very like retro futuristic where it's like hard for you to spot which era or, uh, or, or like when, when it's from. Is this like, is this very right now? Or is it the 90s or like, you know, what is it? And I, I think that's kind of what the vibe was of like some of the saturation videos too. We just want to like, pull from that and push it even further really and i mean to kind of speak again to the nightmarishness of it like how did this concept of the danny brown monster come together like what what exactly was you know the kind of the inception point of that idea and then i don't know when you when you eventually had to pitch the idea to him was he totally down with it at first joe but you should talk about that <laughs> <laughs> i drank some milk I'm allergic to milk. Basically, uh, Dan. I, I don't know how to say his last name, but man, he boy is Dan came through and killed these videos. Come on, dude, Dan's He's fire. Wait, S. Yeah, him and his last name. Shout out, shout out Green Machine. They fucking murdered it. Snap Dan and Cole, Cole as well. Yeah, he, they uh. Oh, Dan, gosh. He held my hand the whole way. He's like, here's some milk. It's there's some blue dye in it. Um. I got the vibe that you, you're the type to puke for the for the camera. He he figured me out pretty quick. So I sat there, I chugged it, and uh, he was like, yeah, we're going to have Danny Brown come out of your mouth. I was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> so we went for it. I threw up off camera quite a bit, like I said, dairy allergy. Uh, but it's cool, man. Uh, I think it came out really good. I, <clears throat> when I saw it, I couldn't believe my eyes. So I know exactly what you what you mean. We also never met Danny till we shot the video too. And his energy was so amazing. It was, it was like, you know, Anything we, said, we like, we was listening to him early on. So it was kind of surreal to be around somebody. Very surreal. You know? Uh, are there any more music videos coming out on the way for uh, for the new record? Do you guys still have more in the works? For um, There's gonna be one for When I Ball okay. next week. It's an animated okay. video. We won't be in it at all. And then we also want to do one for Don't Shoot Up the Party. Uh, to, you know, last thing I want to ask before we uh, get out of the music video. To, yeah. Well, also, yeah. sorry, a video for The Light directed by oh, okay. Joba. Awesome. Like Tori, baby. Okay. Well, b before I get off the topic, I wanted to ask you, uh, you guys, what exactly caused you to go in the direction of like, uh, less music video, you know, formal music video and more like experimental art film for Count On Me. Um, uh, let me know. That video is so fire. Yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, again, it could have just been like a regular music video, but instead it seems like it's, it's, it's kind of jarring in a good way, in an interesting way. I mean, you know, what exactly was, uh, I guess, the impetus for taking it in the direction that it ended up in? I think for this album, we just want to see, like, how far can we really push the envelope when it comes to visuals and aesthetics and, and all that shit. So, like, we just want to do something that would like uh, genuinely excites us and moves us on the visual end of things. And, you know, uh, Brockhampton's barely on that song too. So it was also, let's, let's just like, uh, let's flip it in a cool way and not have us in the video at all. And like, you know, just do Talk something that creative like that. So yeah. You know, speaking of the, uh, the Lil Nas X inclusion in that video and, you know, knowing the various points over, you know, the course of Brockhampton uh, that Ian's been very vocal about gay representation and rap, um, you know, since you've been kind of sounding the alarm on that, do you feel like uh, that's improved, gotten any better or still a long way to go at this point? Definitely has improved, but I would love to just see more like uh, rappers just rapping about this still and being more open and, and more vocal because a lot of the times I I uh, struggle with wanting to say something in a song still. And I feel like if there was more representation, it would just be easier for me to lean into like uh, expressing myself more, which is why I was so moved by the Montero video and everything Nas is doing, Lil Nas, but yeah. I mean, speaking of the Montero video, 
I mean, personally, are you are you at all disappointed or jealous that that Lil Nas is now seen as kind of like the figurehead of the of the gay agenda, as it were? Because I mean, when you guys came on the scene, I feel I feel like that was kind of an open opportunity, uh, and now it just sort of seems like the right wing is obsessed with him and hates him, and now he's the king of the the, the gay agenda. <laughs> I'm mad, jealous, and mad inspired at the same time. Yeah, is is. is I, I've, I'm, I'm not hip to the agenda. Is, is there, are you guys, do you guys go to the meetings or anything? Is, are there notes? Are there bullet points? Or is it like, what's the next step? I think Merlin's always there. Merlin's always oh. showing up. Yeah. Like, do whatever. Merlin and Kieran. <laughs> and sometimes Bari. Right, Bari? Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end. <laughs> All right. So. Matt, you look so good, bro. He does so look good. good. Like that shit. Oh my God, Jesus. <laughs> All right. So, uh, there's going to be another record this year. How is that shaping up right now? We haven't even really talked about it. Um, we haven't started it, but I don't know. What, what do you guys want to do for that? We should, let's talk about it right now. Let's do a little meeting in front of everyone. <laughs> I'm, I'm down. I don't give a fuck. I, I say we go out with a bang. Like just, Self, self-destruct, implode. Just hit the, the, the tactical yeah. nuke? Yeah, tactical nuke. Go, the worst go crazy. There was I'm, also I'm down to like full sin, jump the shark with this shit. There, there was an idea to drop Roadrunner in, uh, in two parts on the same day. We were, it was going to be like just, just two albums at once. It'd be cool if we saved that for this album. Well, now it's not fun. It's not a surprise anymore. Never mind. My bad. I'm I mean, so fuck surprised. it. It could be a surprise if you decide to make it a triple album. But now that but now that Whoa. I've said it. Trilogy is a good idea. Maybe we shouldn't talk about it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's only a, it's only not a surprise if we agree to anything on this call. But we haven't agreed to anything yet, so no one knows what's happening. It was just an open brainstorm. Yep. No agreement on anything. Let's drop the- triple album yeah. and it's one single three-hour track. Yeah. You know what's wild? Yeah, yeah. I used to like I used to send you uh my music when I was in high school and you would give me advice, man. So I just want to say I, I appreciate I can't even remember, you. I don't even remember that you did that. I don't even remember that I did that. I, I know. You're busy no, man. I, no, you actually it wasn't advice. It was like you shouldn't make music for me. That's all you said. Yeah, I, and that's what I do that's what I do <laughs> tell people sometimes. I don't think they should make music for me. Sometimes That's real as fuck. I was like, bro, I really, really want your feedback, your opinion. I was like 15, 16. Well, I say that so. because sometimes sometimes I, I feel like people aren't really paying enough attention to the fact that some of my most favorite music every year is the least commercially successful. And, you know, when, when young musicians are up, you know, up and coming and trying to do their own thing, like I want them to be successful, you know? So it's like, you know, don't don't copy the the weird thing that I'm really into. Do do what speaks to you. Do what you're passionate about. And do and It was the best advice. Thank you. That's some good advice. <laughs> great advice. <laughs> um, you know, speaking speaking of uh, uh, you know my work and to get a little meta here, uh, because I often hear this again and again and again when people talk about you and even when people interview you. Um, it, it, am I currently living up to my cred as the biggest Brockhampton stand right now? I, I feel like sometimes. You know, considering how people talk about me and how people talk about your relation to me, I'm just like not sucking your dicks hard enough sometimes. Like, I feel like I'm just not giving you enough compliments. I'm not saying everything is amazing enough. Um, sometimes, you know, I, I feel like really bad because sometimes when I feel like a certain part is okay or I'm not blown away by a part, I'm like, man, what are people going to think about me? They're going to think that I'm not the biggest Brockhampton fan of all time. Don't review music for us. Review yeah. review music yeah. for me. That's review. right. Take your own <laughs> advice, man. <laughs> well, you know, still though. That being said, I know, I know some of you guys watch. I mean, obviously, um, it, it, to to get to get personal and be real for a second. What for for anybody that has an opinion on this? What's my worst review? Worst review. It could even be it, of, it, all and, 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 of all time. Of all time, and it can't be a Brockhampton review. We yeah. disagree with. Well, the, well, the popular one is the dark fantasy one. People got on you. About yeah, that that, that's 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 a normie opinion. You got to pick another one. Well, that's like a, that's like when a, I was when I was a kid, I felt a type of way about your uh, Channel okay. Orange review and your uh, Yeezus okay. review. 
Hey, you know a review I love? I love the little pump review. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, don't get, I don't get enough props for that review because, you know what, like you said, I review, I review music for me. I review music for me. Mm-hmm. That's true. The, the, That's my Hands Are Brad bit was great. Yeah, that was a great, great bit. <laughs> Um, you know, and, and any other, any other horrible reviews stand out or anything, anything else? What did you Uh-oh. give Dai Lit? Di, I gave, I gave <laughs> Dai Lit a seven. Oh, that's good uh, thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> can my, can my dog get a strong yes, 10? Yes, I actually, we, we I'm, I'm sorry. We were uh, in the middle of a question when he popped up, but we, uh, we do tend to stop for a moment and celebrate any dog that pops up during interviews on stream. So thank you very much. That's a great dog. Uh, yeah. Really, really would like to say hello. Amazing. Uh, we do love it. And now he says, we do love a good dog on stream. Um, because this is also a question that often uh, uh, turns up, um, and I thought it would be interesting to ask you guys, uh, what is each member's favorite member of the group? Hmm. I'm Bareface Hive. <laughs> I'm Bareface Hive till I die. Favorite member? That's a fucked up question, <laughs> man. <laughs> I'm also Joba Hive. I'm definitely Joba Hive. That's for damn sure. I'm going to put one up for Merlin because he gets me with a lot of a lot of one-liners. Yeah, man. Yeah, Merlin definitely has the best one-liners in the group. That's for sure. No question. Also, Kevin Astrak Hive. Man, it, that goes without saying. I love everybody. But right now, I got I to gotta, I gotta give it to my man, Dom. That's fucked up. None of y'all said me yet. <laughs> <laughs> I sit there and record all y'all for hours. <laughs> <laughs> How much bullshit I have to sit through. I thought you said artist, not member. I'm joking. Yo, my favorite member is Roberto. Other, otherwise, vocalist is, is a seven way tie, honestly. I'm going to give some love to I'm going to give some love wow. Fence, fence give sitter. Some love to fence sitter. <laughs> HK deserves some love. Yeah. Well, I I also want to say, uh, you know, speaking of the vocals. Uh, hey, wait, wait. You got to pick a favorite member, bro. Oh, ma- no. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> well, no. Spe- spe- speaking speaking of vocals, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of fans that have been pointing out the fact that they've you know love hearing uh, more of Jabari on the new record. Um, yeah. You know what was what was the the impetus for that? Are we going to hear more of that on the uh, the upcoming one too? Um, yeah, definitely. I just wanted to you know create in a different way, man. Like I wasn't inspired just making beats anymore in twenty twenty. Like after. After COVID, you know, I just wanted to express my express myself in different ways. And for years, I've always given melodies away and stuff like that. So, you know, I just happened to start working on my own music. And as we came back together as a group, it only made sense for me to, like, contribute in that way. But also still make beats, obviously. So, so you've been just ghostwriting some melodies for a bit. I don't want to say ghostwriting because a very collaborative effort throughout Brockhampton, mm. but like I'm always, I always give a melody that gets used, mm. you know. So he's always down for the cause, man. And you know, there's there was I've also gotten quite a few questions here from some fans about the uh, you know is there going to be more bareface on the uh, on on the next record too? Uh, yeah, we'll see. Okay. Probably, you know. Maybe not. Well, <laughs> maybe I'm out of here, man. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> well, speaking of, I guess, solo stuff, since you mentioned it, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, after the next record comes out and as Ian says, maybe there's like, uh, you know, a bit of a reformation or something. Um, who's who's going to have who's going to have their solo record out first? It's a race. Ooh. I, I'm not in the race. I'll tell you that for damn sure. I'm not in the race at all. I feel like birthday is going to come through first, man. I feel like he's already working on that shit. Like, it's already, like, halfway done. <laughs> yeah, I think we've really held Bareface back from his full potential, and he's and he's ready to break out. And, uh, yeah, that nigga too quiet over there. there huh? He too quiet over there. He doing something. Leave us right all now. in the dust. He doing something. He's ready to he's be working on it right now. All right. Uh... <laughs> 
I'm just going to tell you guys that uh, uh, throw out some questions if you have any questions for the group in chat. The mods uh, that I have in the chat will uh, uh, get them to me and we'll uh, uh, start going through them in shout, shout out, out to the mods. mods. Thank you very much to the mods. My shooters in chat. My shooters in chat. Shooters in chat. They, they do ban people. You do have to be nice and kind to the guests in chat. It is true. Um, okay. So, so, uh, you know, we, we, we do take, you know, a lot of, uh, fan service type questions from, you know, the chat and from the, uh, the Q and a section there, there are some hardcore fans that are just dying to know if there's going to be some roadrunner vinyl. Is that on the way? Is that in process? Yes. Okay. Just, just wait. It's happening. Yeah, vinyl takes like seven years to print, so just you gotta be patient. Yeah, the pandemic also fucked that up a lot too. A lot of those things are like they had to change that shit up a lot. It's really sad. It's really fucked up. Mm. No, it is true. It has kind of slowed down the process of uh of really everything. Um, uh, I I have a couple of questions here asking about uh really like the increase in um almost like rock guitars on the new record. There's quite a few, uh, you know, tracks on the, on the new record, at least some standout ones that, uh, you know, have some, uh, uh, just really bold and clear riffs, you know, anything particularly that's kind of, a uh, uh, driving that in inspiration. I think it's just being in the room with certain people who bring a certain, you know, tool to the toolbox, mm. so to speak. Uh, yeah. one of the most people being bared, uh, he's featured on old news, amazing guitarist. Um, Christian. Christian Alexander too. Amazing guitarist, amazing songwriter, and just a good yeah. sound. I feel like a lot of the do a lot of uh, dark fantasy as well. Mm. Yeah, a lot of the a lot of the guitar in this album almost feels like um, two point versions of like guitar things that we've attempted in the past as well too, where it might have just been like maybe just from mill or just like joba having uh, like us doing it in-house but not having to do those things in-house anymore like it makes them so much more expansive you know like you can see like kind of like parallels between like certain guitarists on like songs like milk and lamb and stuff like that when you like hear like what's the occasion it's like oh okay yeah it makes sense that that's where the growth and progression takes you to plus i i, I miss when um uh, i like when you're able to uh recognize a song by just uh like a guitar riff, uh, like the Chili Peppers are great at that, for example. Like I love hearing just like a really good, sticky, catchy guitar riff. And you were in your bag with that shit with Cash, bro. That was a really good guitar riff on that song. I forgot how to play guitar, man. I, I, I stopped and I forgot, but I'll get back on it just for you. Um, I'm getting uh, some other questions about the uh, technical difficulty series um, and, you know, specifically how it links to this new record and any future material as well, you know, considering how a, you know, chain on kind of came back into the fold, uh, you know, reinvented in a way. Are there any other tracks from that series that uh, could bubble up in the future or you could, you know, see coming from that series reinvented on a future record at some point? Maybe, I don't know. Those, those are <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> no idea. We were just Fishbone's one of my favorite songs still. Oh, like Fishbone. that we ever made. Fishbone. Hey, if, 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 but um, whatever happens, yeah, you, got, you got to ask our lawyer, bro, because a lot of those songs have like eight samples each. So I don't know how to release those. Got it. I think the second half of Chain On was like four samples. So that's a that's a question for okay. legal. All right. If if Craig says they could come out, we'll fi we'll figure out a way to put them out. Sounds good. Thank you. Th if, if if there's not a clear answer, that's totally fine. No, that's fine. Honest. That's fine. Um, and I'm also getting a lot of questions about how this new record and um, any future material is is kind of tying into the best years of our live series. Um, you know, for for anybody who's sort of out of the know with that, would you be able to explain like what exactly that is encompassing and how this new record plays into it, if at all? Um, when we put out iridescence on the back of the uh, on the back cover, we put that it was the first from the best years of our live series. Um, and in a weird way, I feel like they do connect. 
I don't know what you guys think, but just like listening to the music, it seems like it could be a follow up to Iridescence. It almost feels like all the music that we've made with RCA is part of that series. When you think about it. But for some reason, Ginger feels like it's on its own island. Mm. True. Yeah, I don't know what that one was. I, I don't know how that one plays into it, man. Interesting thought. Yeah, I mean, as uh, yeah, I like it as the Mar- like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Personally, our label gives us so much freedom, like a, a crazy amount of freedom. But it definitely <laughs> changes the vibe once you know that you have to make an album this year and I have to release it. When before it's like, you know, who's gonna make this album whenever and announce it tonight and put it out tomorrow. You know, so I feel like uh, that's probably why I don't really know if Ginger fits into the into that world because it was like, oh, we gotta make an album, let's make an album rather than like, you know, I'm dying to make this album. But then that, once you start working on it, you start to like, you know, fall in love with the process for sure. Yeah, I mean, as just an outside perspective, I could totally understand that that album is kind of in its own little space thematically and emotionally. I mean, obviously, as Ramil was saying earlier, there have been uh, uh, intensely emotional moments all over the Brockhampton discography so far. But, um, you know, as, as, as far as that goes and considering what was uh, happening with the group at that time, uh, that record does sort of like almost feel like a detour, a good kind of detour, um, in a way. And, uh, this new one, as Ian was saying, almost feels like taking off from where iridescence might've left off in a way and, and getting back on track, uh, maybe, you know, conceptually, uh, spiritually, musically. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And also after I tweeted that we had two more albums coming out this year, it's like, whoa, that could actually complete that trilogy. So it's kind of, it kind of just like, worked itself out you know and that's 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 the fun in it really yeah are there uh you know any features that you guys might want to speak of that uh you may be trying to get for the new record when you uh eventually do start working on it i'd love to work with kid Mm -hmm. cuddy kid cuddy that would be fucking sick that'd be amazing that'd be really sick yeah i'd love to get like production from knowledge that'd be really cool Sick. He works with a lot of different artists, so I can't. I, that that That's should most definitely be Usher. doable. I really want some Usher bucks. Mm-hmm. I'll be sick. Yeah, Usher would be crazy. I'd love to work with a singer named Emma Ray. Hey, thanks for br- thanks for bringing the uh, next dog on the chat. Thank you. Yo, Utah got a cone on his head right now, too. Oh. Is the pupper okay? <laughs> it's silence. Yeah, uh, what's going oh, on, dude? What happened? It's it's style. I don't want to put his his health details out, <laughs> but he's 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 perfectly okay. fine. He's good. perfectly good. fine. Good. You got the attention okay, he cool, needs. Cool, cool. Thank you. This is the fir- this is the first time we've had two dogs on at the same time. No, wait, it might not be. No, I, th- I think it is. Thank you. I appreciate that. We can get more if you want. <laughs> That's fine. That'd be good. If if you if you can manage that. Thank you. I'd appreciate that. Uh, I'll arrange okay. something. Awesome. Awesome. Actually, you, you know, I, I, I can tell you guys what happened. Do you, do you guys really want to know what happened? It's kind of... Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> uh, he, like, uh... He just he got like a hot spot on his on his uh, on his balls, so he can, he can't be scratching them. Damn. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry I put your business out on the internet energy. So the cone prevents him from scratching, from biting his biting. balls. Oh man, that's rough. Yeah, I had a dog with a hot spot. Hot spots are awful. It, you'll survive. Are you taking good care of him, man? Yeah, you take good care. Yeah, it's good that you're doing good dog owner things. That's uh, that's important. Super important. All right. Well, listen. Um, before we go, is is everyone doing fine personally right now? Is everyone doing okay? Is everyone happy? Is everyone feeling mostly stable and together? I appreciate you asking that. I'm doing. I'm in a great mood personally. Yeah, it's a great question, man. Alive. Feel good. 
right. you know, I, I, I worry we, we haven't heard too much from Matt. Is Matt okay? I'm, I'm doing okay, great. I'm Good. Fantastic. Is, uh, is, is there anything that, uh, you know, you'd like to uh, manifest out into the world that you hope happens in the next few years either? Yeah, I really want Drake to be on our okay, next good. album. Like I three times. <laughs> you, still, you still rocking with Pac-Man? Um, y- yeah, uh, yeah, Pac-Man and a little bit of a, a Minecraft Steve at the moment. Minecraft wow. Steve. Okay. I, it's it's funny that you say that because uh, n- nobody knows about that. <laughs> <laughs> but lit- literally nobody knows about that. No one's spoken of of that ever. So un- unless unless you want to speak on it, how how have you never done like a smash uh, tournament on here? I don't, well, I just, I just do music stuff on here. That's all. You, what? Come on, dude. You, you need to do that. May, maybe at some point. People need people need to see you unleash maybe the it's, Pac-Man. Maybe at some point. It, it, he, I, he, I do think he is an underrated character, but um, well, you, no one's told, heard this story. Yeah, no one's heard this story. You came to our house. You played three games, smoked all of us, and why well, I, I play? I came. <laughs> I came to your house when I was on my LA tour. When I was on my West Coast tour, and and don't and and I'm not trying to steal all the thunder here because my friend Swar, who is a mod on this Twitch channel was also uh, there. And I would not be the Smash player I am if not for Swar. Swar is uh He's like professionally he ranked, right? Has ranked and he uh has played in numerous tournaments and he's way better than me. And he's we pretty much came in there and we just consciously we we basically pool sharked the situation. We we pull shark the situation <laughs> because we, we came in and it was just going to be a really quick high and buy because uh, I think you know, there was like this, uh, an agreement to come down to the show, but then nobody made it to the show. So then I just came up and said hi. And um, we saw the switch and Swar was just like, do you, do you guys play Smash? And, you know, and th- there was there was a lot of there was a lot of boasting immediately after it was like, yeah, we, we play Smash. It's like, yeah, we play, we play some fucking <laughs> Smash, and we're like, okay, let's boot it up, let's let's do it. And I was Pac Man, and Swar was Sheik, and uh, b- b- yeah, we we took all those rounds, and then pretty much immediately after we took all those rounds, we we're like, okay, bye guys, have a have a good night. <laughs> have a good night. <laughs> um, I feel bad we didn't ask for money. I feel bad we didn't like. Hey guys, guys, let's. I mean, you know, consciously again, we did we did pool shark it because not only do I know how sick of a player he is, but on top of it, we'd been doing nothing but playing on the tour. So, like, you know, at every stop, we'd just be like, "Hey, uh, we could go to bed now, but do you want to stay up for the next two hours and just play Smash?" And <laughs> so we were like, well practiced, just beating the shit out of each other uh, after every show, and we were just like, "Yeah, let's let's do it. Let's go. Uh, let's let's ask. Let's uh." Let's head over there and let's hang out. And then we saw the then we saw the switch and we were like, okay, we got to play. And again, I'm I feel like we're idiots for not asking for money. We should have been like, hey, how about a thousand bucks a, a round, and just uh just gone that way with it. We probably would have agreed. We would have agreed to it honestly. That would have been. I'm not that good at Smash to agree to that. <laughs> I'd agree. To it. I'm dumb enough just for fuck's sake, man. We could try. So, so yeah, that was the. That was that 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 occurred, but yeah, I'm still I'm still playing Pac-Man every once in a while when I pick it up. I, I haven't played it uh, as much recently, um, just because uh, I don't know. I I just haven't been playing it much during the pandemic. I don't know why. It just hasn't been a go-to. Yeah, yeah. It's a lonely the, game. The Wi-Fi playing on Wi-Fi is not the best. Yeah, you know that that's the thing. You really want to be playing with like other people there, and you know, just like having a good time in person and betting on rounds for money and everything but uh you know it's it's just it's just been more difficult since the pandemic all right well we're gonna go to the hyperbolic time chamber we're gonna train really hard and we're gonna do ten thousand dollar (laughs) games you know the world would be better served with with just the new album just do the new album instead just just worry about the new album (laughs) i I think we're gonna take a break from music for six months and train really hard maybe that's what we should do um I think I think people people got so many broadcasts and albums, man. Y'all 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 are good for it. Yeah, we Come need on. a we need a live stream Twitch, just Super all Smash. of you guys versus me and my mods, Super Smash Tourney, and 
We already <laughs> lost, man. Yeah. Just call it how it is. We already lost. Well, I mean, chat would certainly love it. So I guess, <laughs> I think we get a... a I think we can leave it there now that that's out. I don't think this interview is going to peak any higher than the story of us playing Smash together. Um, <laughs> so, uh, listen, we're all looking forward to the new record when it comes out. Thank you very much for being uh, open books about this new record, this one you just dropped. And um, appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you, Thank you. Sure. Thank you bro. All right. I, I hope everyone's uh, happy and healthy and keeping it together. And uh, hey, you, look, you look great in a yellow flannel, Thank by you. the way. Thank you. It's it's Incredible. it's Very just handsome. one of my things where just how good it looks and the I brand, it just it just worked out. It just came together. I hope we can see you in a yellow flannel again next time. Ian, in, in the promotional picture where you had the flannel on and then you had the green picture, the, the green square in the background, were you trying to copy me there? But that was kind of fucked up. Yeah, it was, it was just a nod. It was like us paying respect, man. You know? Okay. Uh, all right. As long as, long as it was, as long as it was well and, and positively intentioned, that's, that's all that matters. It was, it was. Okay, bro, cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, you guys have a good night. You too. You too. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.